Hi, thanks so much for joining me on another episode of Soap Queen TV. I'm Anne Marie from SoapQueen.com and Brambleberry.com, and today I'm going to show you how to pump up your bath time just a notch. Bath Fizzy Cupcakes. Aren't these amazing? They smell so good, they look so good, they're practically looking edible. Maybe a do not eat sign by these is a good idea. If you've never made bath fizzies before, check out the introduction to making bath fizzies, the video before this to get all the basics. Start, I'm going to take two seconds and line this cupcake mold with cupcake liners. In this mixing bowl, I'm adding one cup of citric acid and two cups of baking soda. Work this around with your hands to get rid of any clumps because remember, clumps equal warts in your finished bath bombs. Once the clumps are gone, it's time to add fragrance. Any skin safe fragrance oil or essential oil will do, but in this case, I'm using orange sherbet from Soapy Loves Delectable Desserts line. Smells just like the orange sherbet treats I used to have when I was a kid. Add 18 milliliters of the orange sherbet fragrance oil or about six dropper fulls. Then it's time to add our colorant. I'm using orange coral Le Bomb colorant. It's a perfect color to match the orange sherbet fragrance. Just about 12 drops of this orange color. That looks pretty good. Now that this is the consistency I want, it's time to get it into our cupcake mold. If you don't have a silicone cupcake mold, it's okay to use a regular metal baking cupcake tin. Just make sure whatever you're using to line it with your cupcake liners first or else those cupcake bath fizzies are never coming out. Pack these in as tightly as possible. Now keep adding more until you have a nice rounded top. Normally with bath fizzies, I ask you to make them flush not in this case, we're going to use the rounded top to help mound up that icing later. That was the last one. Now we're going to set these aside for 5 to 10 minutes while we make our frosting. The frosting is really easy to make. You can either use this nice electric mixer like I'm using, or you can use a stick blender which is commonly used for making whipped cream, or you can use a whisk and a lot of elbow grease. The first step is to blend meringue powder with water. I'm using one and a half cups of meringue powder and about half a cup of warm water. Turn your mixer on to low. We don't want any of that powder going poof all over the place. Once all the powder has been wetted down, increase your blender speed to medium. Blend for around two minutes or until it's fully smooth and all the clumps are worked out. Once your meringue powder is fully wet and mixed in, it's time to add the rest of the ingredients. Add eight tablespoons of jojoba oil two cups of powdered sugar. And now it's time for the sodium lauryl sulfate. Now, SLS tickles the back of my throat, so I like to use a mask when working with SLS and I recommend you do the same. One and three-fourths cup SLS. And finally, one and a half teaspoons of cream of tartar. Now, because this is very, very powdery, what tends to happen is if you turn on the mixer right now, all the powder goes poof, 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 poof. And because the SLS is so irritating to nostrils and throats, I don't like that. So we're gonna do the extra step of hand mixing in slowly. If your mixer is anything like mine, it tends not to get all the way out to the sides or down to the bottom. So just take your spatula and slowly work it around the sides, work it down the bottom, making sure everything is fully mixed in. Now that most of the powders are in, I'm gonna take my mask off and it's time to mix our fragrance with the vanilla color stabilizer. For my frosting, I'm gonna be using vanilla frosting fragrance from the Soapy Love Delectable Desserts line. To keep my fragrance from turning my frosting brown, I'm also gonna be using the vanilla color stabilizer that comes with her kit. It's using equal portions, fragrance oil to vanilla color stabilizer. 
In this case, I'm doing half an ounce of vanilla frosting to half an ounce of vanilla color stabilizer. Just mix these two together and add it to your frosting mixture. Turn your mixer on to low to let this get started mixing. It's looking pretty good. Now that it's a good consistency, turn the mixer off and it's time to add our colorant. This is Tropical Pink Lab Color. It's diluted fully and I'm gonna use about nine milliliters to get a great looking pink frosting. The colorant's in, the fragrance is in. Just keep mixing on medium for a couple minutes. After this has been mixing for just a couple minutes, it's time to stop your mixer and take your spatula and go all the way around the sides and the bottom to get all of the uncolored frosting mixed in well. Turn this on for another 30 seconds and you're done. I like my frosting a little stiff, but if you like a thinner frosting, you can add water starting in one dropperful quantities at a time to this recipe all the way up to a full half a cup of water until you get the consistency that you love. Now it's time to prepare your frosting bag. Cut off the tip and shove your frosting tip all the way down until it's fully exposed. Now turn the bag inside out, take some heaping tablespoons and fill your bag. Three or four will do the trick. Now press all the frosting forward. Don't let it come out the tip though, just up until there. Then take a twist tie and twist tie the back of that bag off just to keep any frosting from eh, coming out the back. Hold the frosting bag like this between your thumb and your forefinger. See how you can direct the frosting bag with your left hand while squeezing with your right? Now I'm right-handed, so if you're left-handed, eh, turn my directions inside out and around and do it the other way. Now it's time to frost. Here we go. Start in the middle and then work your way slowly out. Oh, isn't that turning out great? I love this tip. And nope, make a little dollop and you're all done. One perfect cupcake done and on to the next. These look great, but a little plain. If you wanna dress them up, the time to do it is when the frosting is still moist. Here's some jojoba beads and a eh, little bit of glitter. Don't have a piping bag, don't have a frosting tip, it's okay. I have a way that you can use a bag, just a plain old, you know, Ziploc-y type bag to actually do this. Open the bag up, heap some tablespoons of frosting in there and then and snip off a corner. And squeeze that frosting to the corner almost all the way. Just like the regular frosting bag, take this, the end, put it between your thumb and your forefinger, gently squeeze with your right hand while guiding with your left and go around in a circle, mound it up in the middle, and you're all done. Doesn't that look great? Let's try some jojoba bees on this too. The purple adds a nice touch. Let these bath fizzies dry for 12 to 24 hours before packaging them. You can package them in any number of things. An easy way to do it is a cellophane bag and just ribbon. Here's some I made ahead of time. Wow, that frosting's really hard. Just remember, Put the do not eat sign out prominently so no one accidentally gets these confused with real cupcakes. Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of Soap Queen TV where I showed you how to ramp up your bath fizzies a notch by making bath bomb cupcakes. Until next time, thanks so much. Happy soaping. Not too wide though or else your frosting will have very wide splooches.